confirmation from race committee that we are good to go. That's right, good to go is the phrase for a 4.20 start local time in race nine on day three of the Prada America's Cup World Series between Luno Rosa Prada Pirelli and Enios Team UK. And it'll be a big race for Luno Rosa Prada Pirelli. They will want a point at least because their last race, they come up against Emirates Team New Zealand, which is race number 12. One advantage of this delay, I think, Nathan, is the breeze has definitely filled in more, especially for the Americans, who I think I think it's it's pretty common. They're a little suspect of their light air of their yeah. light air breeze yeah, or light air speed, but uh, this this bit of breeze on here now maybe a little more than actually was even expected. Fully agree with what you're saying. We know the Americans. Okay. The rumor has it they're a little bit slow when it's light, a bit sticky under that nine knot mark. It looks like it's plenty windier than that now. Shirley, on the water to you, how are the conditions looking and uh, what do you expect for the race? Nathan, it, it looks great. I mean, if anything, it's built a little, maybe you know, kind of either side of it of 12 knots. Uh, you can see the boats flying around. I mean, I don't know if it's going to stay all afternoon, uh, but currently it just looks fantastic. I can't can't wait to get going. Ineos also, you know, we were worried about them earlier, had lots of technicians on board, but they have been flying up and down, just having a look at, at this start line, which they're going to be addressing, you know, blind. Um, that can't be easy, <laughs> just with a stopwatch. Um, but yeah, they, they look, actually both teams look absolutely ready to go and have been looking at the start line in, in great detail. Britannia doing her thing in the warm-up to race number nine of this America's Cup World Series. On the bottom right of your screen, you will see the time to start. It's six minutes and 11 seconds and counting down. Port entry will be from Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. They are allowed into the pre-start box at two minutes and 10 seconds. And then from two minutes, uh, Britannia is allowed to enter for what we have seen in the last 24 hours. Some good old elbows out street fighting work and this man Ben Ainsley certainly showed Peter Burling yesterday how to play game. Well, I think he was just practicing all those people. that looked like a from the old uh, I forget what the name of the movie was that looked like a crazy Ivan he was doing right there back and forth zigzagging all over the place they're working on computer systems timing to the line timing into the box uh, how the boats maneuver when they're coming up on on each other so they're ne never a dull moment for these guys, and they're continually okay, uh, trying to learn. Save the lads. So okay, five minutes and 13 seconds, and we're getting close to a start to race nine of this America's Cup World Series. Beautiful day on the Waitemata Harbour, the Hauraki Golf, a summer's day in Auckland, New Zealand. And this will be the first race of four today. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli against Enios Team UK. All right, here we go, guys. The course is clear. The breeze is nice, 12 knots. Both boats have been foiling for the last five minutes as we've been watching them do pre-start manoeuvre practice, time on distance. You know, the teams have probably enjoyed this bit of time to really just keep working on their boat. The RMS sounds like it's working now, so they're going to have the software working. So uh, we should be in for a good race. Confirmation, it will be a six-leg race. Confirmation, six-leg race, considering we are now a little bit an hour over the original start time, which was to be at 3.12 local time, and it's now 16, almost 16, 16 local time, should I say, 4.16, I was looking at the 24 hour clock, my apologies. So as a sailor right now, you're thinking, they might be thinking just of a one race day. I mean, you got, right? I mean, you got to start, you got to start putting yourself in the brain of, of Ian Murray and, and see what he's thinking from a time standpoint, whether he's already just said, hmm, you may not get this second race off, so we'll do a nice long one for race number one. I guess at the end of the day, all that matters is you focus on the race right in front of you, just try and get the win, and when the race is over, someone in that big team of yours is going to come in, tap you on the shoulder and say, hey guys, that's it for the day, or no, get ready for another one. Which, which makes the second race between Emirates, the team New Zealand and American Magic, an absolute stonker. Yeah. That one, if, if we go to a one race day, 
that will decide quite simply who wins the Prado Americans Cup World Series and gets number one seeding for tomorrow's Christmas race. No question about that. And again, I think this breeze strength coming up during the delay is probably giving the Americans a little more confidence. They just simply like their boat better in a breeze. So there is the course set. They have moved the course north. It's a, it's a mix, Kenny, right? It's a mix of courses A and B. Yeah, it's out there, and this is the Haraki Gulf. Uh, we're setting, it, it's much more spread out. It, you get a, away from that stadium setting where the people up on North Head and other places are out watching the races. So you, you got to be on a boat to watch the race here today. Or with us. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, they have port entry. They are allowed into the box and two minutes and 10 seconds. They came in early yesterday and got a penalty. It would appear if the numbers are right, they will not be getting a penalty today as we click over 2.10 now. And Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli will make their entry into the start box. And Enios Team UK will time their entry for two minutes. And they will do that comfortably well. So right now, it's the start of the pre-game maneuvers for race number nine. Interesting that Ineos Team UK actually had to put their other board down to keep stable, keep out of the water, keep the hull out of the water because they were early. It wasn't because they were late. They were early. They had to slow down quite a bit. Copy. Hang on, getting speed here. Okay, board down. Two, one, board down. One. Your wheel turn it. Okay, one twenty here. Your pitch, Lee. Very aggressive one turn that one, but the boat sat on the foils, and with one minute twenty to go, big separation between the two teams right now. Wonder if Luna Ross are going to come back and have a go at him here on start attack. Much bigger start box here today, so these boats feel a little more spread out. One of the reasons, for sure, yesterday there was so much kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat is. They were forced together by how small the, the, small the starting line box was. This is a much bigger box today, so you're gonna, I think you're probably going to see a little more time and distance, and maybe a little less aggressiveness. 45 seconds to go. The start of race number nine. Who will have the upper hand? He's taking on the breeze. Taking on the breeze. Yeah, we're safe. Okay, we're almost racing. We go for a sling shot. Nice, very nice separation here. Slight starboard fight. Slight starboard fight. Yeah, some burning. Looking there by the build here. Pressure good to the left. Okay, here we go. Pulling the trigger. Three, two, one. Let's go. Big shot. Canvas good. Okay, count out to 20. Ready to trim, no. trim. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, start. And they are yeah, away yeah. in race number nine. Strong starts by both Britannia yeah, and Luna Rossa. Great time and distance, really, yeah. by both boats. In a way, Prada was a little early, but they had a nice gap to weather. It was fun to kind of sit back and listen to both teams talking about their tactics, talking about their approach. And let's face it, both of the time and distances to that starting line were exceptional in that start. No, no timing issues today from what we've seen so far. A big incident coming here on the boundary. Right now, you've got Linnerosa to windward with the starboard tech advantage over Ineos Team UK. When they come out of this boundary, I expect Linnerosa is going to do it straight into a face tack here and really shut the race down pretty early on this race. And there you have it, straight on top of it. Maybe a touch too late. Ineos looked like they might sneak through to lure. The apparent wind angles on these boats are so narrow that even though it looks like they'd be getting dirty air there right now, they've probably got clean air out in front. For sure, Stephen, Ineos actually tacked and actually bore away a little further than normal, anticipating getting tacked on there and trying to get their air clear out on the right side or the leeward side of Luna Rosa. So that was actually tactically a very good move by uh, Ben Ainsley to make sure they have clear air so they didn't have to pull into another tack right away. That would have been a disaster. Both very, very smart. Just remembering, of course, that Luna Rosa Prada probably have two helmsmen. And the 
arrival of uh, Jimmy Spidlin and Francesco Bruni. Well, it's going to be a split tag. Surely you're on the water. What did you make of that start and how they are okay, settling into this first leg? My trap. I've got to be below red. I thought it was a pretty impressive start from the yeah. Italians. Maybe a little bit faster to, turn now. Get some separation between you and the boat's lured, and they executed that really well. I've just been watching them on this speed as well, just gradually, gradually increasing the gap away from Ineos. To me, they look like they have they have the edge. Um, Prada, they just have a little bit of a little bit extra speed and a little bit of extra height, which really helped them when they were close. Yeah, Shirley, from uh, our perspective here, it looked like the bottom average. speeds of the two boats are very different in the tax. Looks like Luna Ross are around 25 knots bottom speed in that tack, whereas Ineos Team UK were right there at 20 knots. So it's a long rebuild, you know, they're averaging 30 knots upwind in a straight line, but when you're dropping down to 10 knots below your peak speeds, it takes a long time to get back up there. One thing for sure though, they are much faster getting that weather board out today on all of these tacks. So that that clearly was a focus on the one stage. And a loose cover by Luna Rosa. You know, we've seen all kinds of different tactical strategies by these boats and instead of tacking right on the right in front of Ineos. Team UK, they spread it out a little bit. They just kind of let the boat speed do its thing. They might see a little bit of a left-hand wind shift up on this side of the race course on the bottom of your screen, but uh, certainly not the same tactics we saw the Americans use the last couple days. Really tight hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's worth noting we're seeing channel markers all through this course, and that must be just another obstacle that they have to take into account because it's not. You could say a clean course in respect of that. Well, right? they're, they're also made out of steel or you know some form of metal. They win. Okay, in the collision, they win every time, one hundred percent of the time against a light little carbon fiber toy. Let us not remind ourselves of what almost happened to Emirates Team New Zealand yesterday when they it was a little bit of a communications breakdown between Glenn Ashby and Alison Peter Burling, and they got very, very close to a marker at the top gate. Luna Rosa brought up rally tacking to confirm their entry into the top gate and complete the first leg of six in this race nine of the America's Cup World Series. Yours. Yeah, it, was, it was almost flawless when you're looking at Francesco Bruni on that uh, lewd side of the boat. Just feel like staring around, boys. Let's go. Okay. Bring you down slow here. Bearing away is too. Be careful, Stephen. With all this terminology you're gaining about sailboat, where you're going to become a sailor if you're if you're. You better be careful there, son. Well, I would be lucky to have two boys like you beside me to tell me what the heck to do, but I know I'd be running a lot of you on the boat, Kenny. <laughs> and she'd be an old school boat too, right? Old school, old school boat, baby. There's going to be a spinnaker on it, right, Nathan? <laughs> Back in the good old days when we had nylon spinnakers. Now the boat's just turned downwind and you don't even know if you're going upwind or downwind. And frankly, it's one, I have to admit, it's one of the things that the traditionalists, the purists, don't love about this style of sailing is you're, it's hard to differentiate upwind from downwind, right? There's no changing of sails, there's no sails going up and down, but let's just look at how bloody fast they are, the excitement, how really I've found the youth of, that are getting into sailing, the young people are just getting so into foiling, so into speed at such a young age, and there's no question that this regatta is going to help keep, continue to promote that. I was speaking to someone the other day yeah, about you know, how sailing yep. is evolving. And, and the one where they said, I think it's going to be a Simple as that, Nathan, you, you this guy in your spare time, right? This guy led the way over here. I mean, of anybody in the world. The how many times you win the Moth Worlds? Two Moth World titles. I started the friends. I started the Moth Worlds, started selling Moths in 2008. Quite a while ago. The foil that you have here on one of these boats is, is just basically a scaled-up version of what we had on the moths.
12 years ago. 616, 17, 20, this keeps going up. The yeah. lead of yeah. Lula Rosa Prada Pirelli over Enios. Team UK yeah, on the downward leg. Leg yep. number two of six in this ninth race. Three, two, Important one, race two for Lula Rosa when it comes to points. If we are going to complete the full round robin today because of the delay in spectator craft not allowing hey, us to get this race underway at 12 minutes okay, past three up. local time. So they need this point. The pressure. Us getting a little more now. Then we're up on trap there for me. Nice little let down this but it gets us the ley line. Probably can help us. Copy that. Yep. Listening on board Copy. Britannia. <sighs> How's pressure let down the yeah, boundary? It's just, we're just soaking down a little puff here, it's quite nice. I think. Copy. Trying right out of uh, just, Yeah, looking. Nathan, the Italians are sailing like a boat that they, like a team that thinks they have a speed edge. How's it back the other way? And uh, Britannia is sailing like a team searching for speed. 100% right. But the interesting thing is, is that whenever we look at the numbers when the boats are stationary, or not stationary, whenever the boats are on a leg, the speed numbers are almost identical. Now they're around that 30 knots upwind, 33, 34 knots downwind. But I think it's the manoeuvring and perhaps the angles that is really making the difference between these boats at the moment. Trim, trim, trim. Trim, main. Yeah. It looks like a good one and a half, two lengths left mark. Copy that. Well done. Well done. here. Trim. Luna Rosa, Prada Pirelli. Heading towards the bottom gate for the first time. Maybe with a wall the way to one. size will lead on Ineos Team UK over 500 metres. One, coming up. Big trim, boys. Big trim. Trim. Okay, good. Not a lot of check coming off board. Nice, good today. pressure there's here. No, there's no pressure on them right now, so a, a quiet boat is always a boat that's comfortable. And, and 20 seconds, I think we go all the way. Their maneuvers are Without taking beautiful. any risk. I mean, that's, it's not a sailing band, term, but it's... It does apply. Ten seconds, boys. We did this yesterday. Stand by. Yes. 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 Put a main on. Okay, Some stage you're going to have yeah, to make nice. a choice. Do you go around through this gate just in the water at slow speeds, or do you risk kind of missing the gate while you're trying to do a speed build? Ten seconds, boys. You can see all the white water coming off the back of the rudder. Yeah. That's just complete loss of steerage, loss of grip. And um, boat basically just kept rounding up out of that jive and going head to rear. So the question for someone watching this, loss of grip, mate? Well, the steering wheel is connected to the rudder. That's what's driving the boat. And when you are so middle of the jive and you get air all, all over the rudder, you so can't drive the boat. Here they go. They're now. getting up on the floor now. They've still got one more drive to go here. They haven't made it down to the gate. So as Kim was posing the question, do you just plod along in the water or do you get it up and foiling and going again? And here they go rolling into another jive. I'm sure they're anal they'll analyze that, right? Because at one stage, you can see their wake. They were they they splash down about here. Are they faster just going slow speed down like that, or to try to get high speed looping all the way back out and around and come back in? Okay, ten seconds to a turn up. I, I can't tell you the answer. Though. The letter that was fixed. My as we see it right yeah. Okay, stand by, two, oh. one. And that lead has blown out. Break up, break up. Uh, and Enios Team UK. Stop that. Get around that bottom mark. Finally, for the first time, and hit up on leg three. Uh, uh, that was nasty. Okay, we're going to have to go around that. We've had a course change out here, Stephen and Nathan. So instead of a six-leg race, finishing downwind, they're actually going to shorten the course and finish upwind a five-leg race. Very light, boys. When you're ahead this far, 
it's probably a pretty good thing to hear. Shorten this race as short as you want at this stage if you're, if you're a fan of the Italians. There are plenty of Italian fans that are at the uh, Var Duct and the America's Cup Race Village, and that just gives you a, an obvious indication of how far Luno Rossa are ahead of Ineos Team UK. Luno Rossa at the top right of your picture, and Ineos Team UK yeah, I don't wanna go after the splashdown. Target uh, at the moment, Pedro. In a little bit of bother, so now two legs to go, so now a five leg race, not six legs. Great graphics along the bottom, finding out the, the real numbers between the boats, and these numbers are coming straight off the boats. These are not numbers that we're just kind of making up or anticipating. And like you said, before that tack, Nathan, the speeds were really similar, or actually the, the Brits seem like they're a little quicker sometimes. And then look at the VMG numbers. They're very similar too. Actually, Ineos, Team UK's numbers are a little higher. I honestly think these guys are not necessarily that slow, but they're losing a lot every maneuver. And we saw one bad maneuver put the boat in the water, and it's, it's a minute 30 loss. I'm just a little concerned that that spectator fleet is inside the boundary. You know, they're saying, coming back, they're creeping back. Always been attacking quickly, otherwise you're in, you're in trouble. You, that, that is, that, that's my word of the day. <laughs> you love that. Over a thousand meters, almost 1,500 meters, we're heading towards the uh, Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli in front of Ineos Team UK. Just a reminder, this is now a five-leg race. It'll be an upwind finish. If I was on one of those spectator boats, I'd be just edging in ever so slightly all day long. I think we should be able to play this. Look. He's part yeah, of the problem, Steve. Not the solution. Yeah. He's well, part of the problem. Well, of the problem. Here we thought we had a, responsible, a, now. Now. a responsible colleague, and now he's showing just a, a tad of irresponsibility. Yeah. Well, I don't need to do it because I've got the best pictures in the world sitting here next to you guys. But if I was on the water, I'd be in front row. I'd be just getting in there. and. That's why I'm in here with you Remember, guys. Remember, they're listening. I oh, know, that's. The, I just realized. <laughs> okay, guys, don't listen to me. Just stay back. Stay out of the way. This will be really good. This will be really good data, too, for Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli, because light air, you want these things to fly in light air, don't you? And, and, and Luna Rossa Pirelli Pirelli want to be better in light air, don't they? Remember, we talked earlier, they, they, they think they still have another set of foils to come, so these guys are just starting. Luno Rosa Prada Pirelli heading towards the top gate for the penultimate time now okay, because it turned into a five leg race and they will finish upwind. Yes. Pitch down. So a quiet boat's a good boat. No, no, there, you always hear that. There's no question. And it's just human nature when you're in tight, when you're when you're in tight, when it's really close battle. That's when you know you get amped up. The adrenaline's going. You're amped up. You're, you know you're 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 over communicating probably in that spot. In this spot, nothing against the British right now, but these guys are out just cruising around. There's there's no pressure. The only pressure is don't break your boat right now. That's how they lose the races. They break the boat. I would love to go back and talk about this twin helming of the Rosso Prada Pirelli because we have seen yesterday and the, and the way they jive there and the, the way they attack, it is a smooth operation. Do we think at this early point in this whole cycle that that is a subtle advantage going forward? It definitely looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah, watching them sail around the track, they're, um, they're working very well together, both Jimmy Spittle and Francesco Bruni. When they do the manoeuvres, they only have one crew member crossing the boat. They're kind of an extension of each other. They have a lot of time that they're looking at driving the boat and performance numbers, and then they go down and the, the guy to look at his flying the boat. Shirley, you're in the, the camera cap following them closely. What can you see with Luna Rosso and the way that Jimmy Spittle and Francesco Bruni are sailing that boat? Nathan, we spoke about it yesterday, didn't we? It's really smooth in the manoeuvre. It's just this, you know, not crossing the boat and all that disruption and, and big tall people, uh, you know, 
getting getting in the wind. It, it, it looks really slick. I did speak to Jimmy about it last night at the press conference. He said the only downside is they obviously they only steer for half the time. So in terms of you know getting better at it, you know it's slightly frustrating. You're only actually steering for half the day. But he's pretty happy to be sharing that role and learning from each other. I mean, two of the world's best helmsmen, you know, swapping ideas. What, what's not to like about that? You know, I, I have concerns perhaps in the heat of battle, how that works, who makes the decisions and how you job share, but going in a straight line and executing perfect maneuvers, they're looking good. Shirley Robbins, a two-time Olympic gold medalist, best eyes on the water for the Prada 36th America's Cup, and this is the Prada America's Cup World Series as Luna Rosa extend their lead by a considerable margin. And it would appear that Ineos are struggling somewhat. Is, I just wonder, Kenny, if the wind's just got a little bit lighter. It's hard to, it makes you kind of cringe, right? Because you just don't want them in the water because we've seen how hard it is for any of these boats to get out of the water. But certainly, especially for Ineos, stay up oh, and out of the water. And it was, a, look at it, it's a 10 knot. I, I, I don't think they're really out of the water, but they're just on the edge. Yeah. They, they all changed to a smaller jib. They might be regretting that move right now. Maybe they just got to start airing on a bigger sail. I, I don't know. There's a million there's a million reasons why. And as armchair sailors right now, it's easy for all of us. Plenty of smart people that can try to figure this out. These guys are smooth. You know, they're, they're, they're just... Coming up a little, just getting a little light spot. We love it. We love to... Charge it. Come out and, and Three, have their conversation. Two, one. Okay, nice Look at the camber they put in the bottom of the mainsail coming out of that jive. Remember, folks, it's not just the foils; it's the it's the engine above the deck as well. Nice and the delay line, boys. Oh, these guys are struggling at slow the speeds. Ineos Team UK just limping Not around. Easy. Are they going to get around that mark? Fastest mark. Yeah. Must be getting okay, lighter for this to be happening. You know, we saw the first lap didn't touch the water the entire lap. Shirley, how much has the breeze drop for this to happen? Yeah, Nathan, you're right. It has softened. It's probably sort of eight, nine knots now, occasionally 10, but yeah, definitely decreasing. It's painful, isn't it, watching Ineos? I mean, something's just just not right, whether it's hardware or, or the software mapping or, or what, but particularly in the maneuvers, they lose so much speed turning the boat. Um, a bit that's of where it all goes wrong. And you've said in a straight yeah, line they don't look too bad, not too but bad actually, the pressure, actually, you know, having to swap from side to side, it's okay. it's really painful. Nice. Okay, good. Good that. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli now on their, on their upwind side. finish leg. Actually, the pressure leg looks better four from now five on. of five, and they're pretty much a full <laughs> leg ahead Three, of Ineos Team two, UK. One, and they one, have one. just run, you would be tempted to say, a flawless race. It's no phrase any sailor ever wants to hear. They're a full leg ahead. You know, it's, we don't, it's rare. We don't see it a lot, but... That means there's. We, we thought there might be some light air troubles for the for the Brits, and uh, that is officially confirmed. Well, Kenny, you're looking at the boat speeds here. 15 knots doesn't have you falling. So Ineos Team UK are at the top marks, not foiling. You know, it's it's a, it's a tough thing to do to, to to get the boat now up on the foil and start going downwind. Unless you're falling, you don't go downwind in these boats at all. So. They're going to need a puff of breeze pretty soon, otherwise they're going to be uh, running out of room on the boundary. Coming up a little bit. And then they're going to start all over again. It's quite apparent. Look at those speed differences. Oh, 31 knots steady. Looks good. And uh, Ineos Team UK sitting around 20 and a half knots. Very cool. Twin skin mainsails. Those are two leeches of the mainsail oh, in the good. back end there. And they're controlling each side of the skin off of this big D-sectioned mast. 
it's, well, I can't wait to find out more about how these teams are doing. Of course, they're not going to tell us until the end of the campaign, but all of these teams have incredible yeah, yeah, control systems on, on how they can create camber, twist, ease, trim. Though, or, or talking about two guys about the ability to control the main so and how much of an advantage that gives you in any race. Oh, power control is, is critical, particularly as it gets lighter. There's, there's so much going on on these boats. You know, a typical soft sail is really difficult to make adjustments in terms of its depth. And Let's go, arrow, boys. Draft position. And right now, these teams are allowed to adjust the bottom meter and a half of that sail. With the twin yeah, skins, they can get more to depth to in the bottom. You can uh, see here, Ineos Timmy Cage still, still not foiling, better. clearly struggling in this light air. I think they I, they just had a protest, I, I believe. We'll talk to Richard Slater in a minute for a penalty because they probably went outside the boundary. Yeah, well, uh, you know, as I was saying before, unless you're this foiling, you're not going to get going downwind. This is the umpire's GBR boundary penalty and cleared. There you have it. Yeah, they ran out of room. They were trying to get it up on the foil, and by the time they probably got it up on the foil, hit the boundary, you have to jive straight away. But what's impressing me right now is Lina Ross don't even look close to coming off their foil. They're just gliding through so nicely. Fast turn. Foil up very nice and exit. Look at that. Super smooth. Oh, my goodness. Wow. What a difference. So... There's two things going on here. It's, it's the foil sizes and the areas and the section shapes and how well and they that's handle. That's we're out here when speeds. we're talking about that. That foil size and they don't have. And I notice here they don't have a bulb. They, uh, some of the some of the foils have a big bulb there in the center. So they're they're putting the weight in the foil itself, the weight in the span and foil. These got to be maybe a little bit bigger um, foils than others. What do you think? Well, you'd, you'd assume right now that they've got a bigger Just foil than Ineos Team UK because the lighter it is and the slower you go, the the, bit, the more important is to have area. Okay, area will give you that lift. But That's we need to get to the bottom line. of this and find Is that a steel back that looks, here? That looks like a steel. The steel yeah. trim tabs. Yep. And exactly. those trim tabs move up and down. Plunk and then these, uh, this is the actual foil Piece itself in the front. God, my drawing is getting so much better. Have you guys know that I have you? Uh, you are. Uh, you have it. You've been a lot of Give me a compliment. On you've been that. practicing, haven't you, all I night long? I've been coloring. Take, I take the computer home different. and you just keep practicing. With your son, with your two-year-old son. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, it, it, it was crayon. It was crayon <laughs> practice. Here we go, Kenny. Yeah, How about fast, that? Uh, and look at this. In come Enios team. Excuse me, Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. Heading towards the finish, which is now an upwind finish. They cut this race down by one leg. It was originally six. It is now down to five, and it'll be a dominant win by this magnificent machine, Luna Rosa, cruising it at some 28 knots to the finish line in race number nine of the Prada America's Cup World Series. Another penalty to Ineos UK. Potentially that will be again another boundary of the because they are just up. struggling, Kenny. Yep. Feel bad. Let's feel, you know, I can feel the frustration from here throughout their entire organization. Luna Rosa, Prada Pirelli, wins race number nine of the Prada America's Cup World Series and will be. Let's be blunt, an enormous margin as they cross the finish this line. This is the umpire's boundary penalty, penalty JBR. Penalty complete. Boys, five seconds. And the fans, you can Three, understand, are two, overjoyed. One, two, got it. So that's the finish of the race. And right. yeah. They got to get back down to the other end of this uh, of the of the racetrack anyway to start their next race whenever that's going to happen. So they're they're just sailing along and uh, go for a nice cruise, get a little more data. Emirates Team New Zealand, American Magic. This is the race committee. We intend to start your race at 16:55, course six. 55 they, they are going to start in 10 minutes. Emirates team New Zealand on your screen. They are the next race up in a big old showdown.
Let's make this quite clear. Both Emirates Team New Zealand and American Magic Patriot are on three points in this America's Cup World Series. 16.55, 4.55, 4.55 will be official start time of race number 10. And really, they just need to get it. Ineos is still racing, and they have all the right in the world to race. Again, let's get data. Let's try to get better. Let's try to figure this thing out. Once they get around that this lured gate and start heading back upwind, uh, then, the, then in essence, the course clears for these other two boats, and we can consider starting getting uh, to get their race underway. Days of ups and downs for Ineos Team UK. Nathan, great day yesterday. Such so positive and. Today, just uh, a, you know, like another another roadblock on the on the road moving forward, but they can get around. Well, yesterday was a big step forward in the control systems. Today, you know, maybe a little bit of a snap back to reality. You know, okay, yep, boat's working fine, but we're not quick enough. And Ben's been really upfront about this the whole time. He knows they have some weaknesses in the light air, and I think that became apparent probably in the last couple of weeks and uh, that was never going to get Big fixed for any of this racing today. The real question is, is what do they have up their sleeve Pressure. to get the boat on pace come on. January? Exit. He said Eels. more components are coming in their press conference. We've got more components coming, but they know they're not as quick as everybody else. Well, uh, all I can hope is that these aren't their race forms, and the new components that are coming is something that's performing better in the lighter winds and, and allowing them to manoeuvre better. And I really hope they have some new sails coming that they can manipulate through the range and generate more power. Magic potion. Are you looking for a magic potion yeah. out there right now? You love, we all have been, listen, we've all been here in tough spots and magic potion, you always dream of it, but the reality is it's a lot of little things typically. Ben Ainsley. At the wheel. Uh, Luna Rosso, Luna Rosso. This is the race committee. Nice uh, in case you missed it, your race was finished at the Windward Mark. Um, happy for you to retire from the race course as we're trying to start straight away. Voice of Ian Murray, yeah, the race uh, director, Rosso, yep, saying, we're just sailing hey, down here. Rosso, um, just we're heading know. off the course now. Left hand turn coming up. Just to let you know, we're you finished. Finish. Get out okay. of the way. Race committee, uh, this, this is going okay, to by up. Yep. Two, one, American Magic. Yeah, Ian, have you, uh, have you seen a race course yet? So, Luna Rosa, Prada Pirelli, win race number nine against Ineos Team UK. By, we don't know what the official margin is, we can just simply say plenty as we get ready for the big showdown. Three wins apiece, Emirates Team New Zealand and American Magic.